Ever wondered what actually happens when you pump iron or do a bunch of push-ups and your muscles start to grow? It's not magic or secret superpowers. It's pure biology with a dash of sweat. When you lift something heavy or challenge your body, you're basically daring your muscles to adapt. Your muscles are like a construction crew that only shows up when they sense a disaster. So, we'll give them just that, tiny bits of disaster during workouts, and boom, they rebuild stronger. Think of it as intentionally ripping a shirt so it can be sewn back extra tough. Intrigued? Let's break down the science, have some fun with it, and see how lifting heavier actually turns into real muscle. First, let's talk about stimulus, the spark that sets real muscle growth in motion. It doesn't matter if you're bench pressing a heavy bar in the gym, pushing up from the floor at home, or pressing a loaded backpack overhead in your bedroom. Your muscles don't have a preference for equipment or fancy machines. They only care about one thing, how much resistance you're putting them under. Every time you challenge a muscle, pressing, pulling, squatting, curling, you're forcing it to produce force against that resistance. As you push through each rep, the fibers inside the muscle are placed under tension. That tension is what starts the magic. Inside the tissue, tiny microscopic tears form. And while tears might sound alarming, this is exactly what you want. Those micro tears act like little alarm bells telling your body, we need to rebuild stronger than before. After your workout ends, your body immediately switches into repair mode. Blood flow to the trained muscles increases, carrying oxygen, amino acids, and other nutrients to the area. Specialized cells rush in to patch up the damaged fibers, fusing them back together and adding extra protein strands for reinforcement. Over hours and days, this remodeling process makes the muscle thicker, stronger, and more resilient. That's the essence of hypertrophy, building new muscle tissue as a direct response to the stress you put on it. But here's where many people miss the point. You can't just go through the motions. For the break it down so you can grow back cycle to work, you need enough challenge. Light weights you can toss around forever or sloppy push-ups that barely move your body won't spark adaptation. The muscle has to feel genuinely threatened, like it's being asked to perform at its limit. That's why progressive overload is such a cornerstone of training. You need to gradually increase the demand, add more weight, do more reps, slow the tempo, or choose harder variations so the fibers never get too comfortable. Equally important is what happens once the stimulus is over. Muscle repair doesn't happen during the set. It happens after, when you're resting, eating, and sleeping. Recovery is the secret half of the equation. Without enough sleep, proper nutrition, and time between sessions, those fibers can't rebuild to their full potential. Overdo it, hammer the same muscles every day with no rest, and you tip the balance toward breakdown without repair. That's how overtraining stalls progress or even leads to injury. So think of muscle building as a three-part cycle. One, apply tension, challenge the muscle with resistance. Two, create controlled damage. Those micro tears are your growth signal. Three, recover and rebuild. Give your body the resources to come back stronger. When you misunderstand this cycle, training stops being random effort and becomes a clear process. Every rep, every set, every rest period has a purpose. To stress the muscle just enough, then let your body respond by making it bigger, denser, and more capable than it was before. That's the art and science of resistance training, and it all begins with the right stimulus. If you keep doing the same easy workout over and over, your muscles eventually shrug and say, cool, we've got this handled, no need to change. That's why so many people hit a frustrating plateau. The body is a master of efficiency. Once it figures out how to handle a certain load, it won't waste extra energy building more strength or size unless you give it a reason. That reason is called progressive overload, the golden rule of muscle growth. It simply means you must keep turning up the challenge, little by little, so your muscles never get too comfortable. Think of it as teaching them a new language. If you only learn a few words and repeat them forever, you'll never become fluent. Your muscles need new vocabulary in the form of extra resistance, more reps, or tougher variations. There are several smart ways to apply progressive overload. Add resistance. Increase the weight you lift, even slightly. Two extra pounds on a curl or five more on a squat can make a huge difference over time. Increase volume. 
do an extra set, or squeeze out one or two more reps while keeping good form. Change the tempo. Slow the lowering phase of a lift, pausing at the hardest point, or explode up faster. All of these make a familiar exercise harder without adding load. Advance the movement. Once a push-up feels easy, elevate your feet or move toward a one-arm variation. If bodyweight squats aren't a challenge, try Bulgarian split squats or pistols. A good rule of thumb is to nudge your workload up by around 10% each week, enough to stimulate growth, not so much that you fry your recovery. Think of it like leveling up in a video game. Each new level asks for a little more XP, and in the gym, that XP is extra tension on your muscles. What doesn't work is staying in the comfort zone. Curling the same tiny dumbbells for months won't sculpt your arms, and cruising through identical sets of push-ups forever won't magically build a bigger chest. Muscles grow because you challenge them with something they haven't fully mastered. Progressive overload is the quiet engine behind every transformation story you've ever seen. When you train with the mindset of constant gradual improvement, you turn every workout into a stepping stone. Week after week, those small increases add up, and suddenly you're stronger, leaner, and lifting weights you never thought you could. By the way, let's talk about where cardio fits into the big picture, because this is a spot where a lot of people get confused. Running, cycling, rowing, or any other steady-state cardio works your muscles, yes, but in a completely different way from strength training. These activities focus mainly on your heart, lungs, and overall endurance, rather than raw power. They're fantastic for stamina and general fitness, but they're not designed to pack slabs of muscle onto your arms or chest. When you go for a run or spin on a bike, your muscles contract repeatedly in a smooth, rhythmic way. That repetition keeps them toned, improves blood flow, and conditions the slow-twitch fibers that thrive on endurance. What it doesn't do is create the kind of microscopic damage, those tiny muscle fiber tears, that come from heavy resistance training. And those micro tears are exactly what send your body the message, we need to rebuild bigger and stronger. Think of it this way, cardio gives your muscles a relaxed jog, while weightlifting puts them through a tough boot camp. Both are useful, but they serve different purposes. A long run won't make your biceps pop, just like endless curls won't magically turn you into a marathon runner. That said, don't ditch cardio entirely if your goal is strength or muscle. A healthy heart and efficient circulation are essential for getting oxygen and nutrients to working muscles. And that means better recovery and more energy when you hit the weights. Cardio can also help keep body fat in check, which lets all that hard-earned muscle definition show through. The real secret is balance. Use cardio as a support system. Two or three sessions of moderate running, cycling, or rowing each week keeps your engine running smoothly, while resistance training does the sculpting. Together, they create a foundation of endurance, strength, and overall health, the kind of combination that makes you look good and feel even better. Now let's step into one of the most underrated secrets of muscle growth, the mind-muscle connection. This isn't just a catchy phrase. It's the practice of deliberately engaging the muscle you're training so every rep counts. When you pick up a weight and simply move it from point A to point B, you're only scratching the surface of what that exercise can do. But when you focus on how the target muscle is stretching, contracting, and holding tension, you unlock a deeper level of activation. Studies using EMG technology show that lifters who actively think about the muscle they're working recruit more fibers than those just pushing or pulling without awareness. For example, doing a biceps curl, people who visualize their biceps shortening while lifting tend to fire up more of the muscle, and that extra recruitment adds up over time. So how do you put this into practice? Start by slowing down your reps. On the way up, concentrate on contracting the muscle as tightly as possible. At the top, pause for a brief squeeze, then lower under control instead of letting gravity do the work. This isn't about ego lifting, it's about precision. Use a weight you can manage with perfect form so you can actually feel the muscle working from start to finish. Another tip is to minimize distractions during sets. Don't rush through your workout while scrolling your phone or chatting with friends. Give those 30 seconds of effort your full attention. Visualize the muscle as if you're sculpting it with every repetition. Over time, this awareness teaches your nervous system to fire the right fibers in the right sequence, making each rep more productive. And here's a bonus. The mind-muscle connection doesn't just improve activation. 
It also sharpens technique and protects your joints. When you're locked in on the movement, you're less likely to sway, cheat, or overload supporting areas like your lower back or shoulders. Think of this as leveling up your training quality. Anyone can fling a weight around, but the lifters who master control, tempo, and tension are the ones who build lasting strength and shape. So next time you train, don't just move the weight. Own every inch of the rep. Your muscles will know the difference, and your results will show it. If you want to learn the differences between hypertrophy and strength training, make sure to watch the next video.